Sadie. is roaming once again with Illusion. They're trying to bully out ABC here, but this time there was a war that they walked through as they did get pinged out. BDD pops the Dominus early. He's looking to go in. Like Fallbreaker is coming, and it's Assault and Battery on the next ABC, but he gets the Rift Walk over the wall. Wins is there. Absolute Zero being channeled. Gets stunned out, but Illusion getting bursted down. Ignite comes out, and oh, real gets the kill. Now BDD <laughs> looks to be next. Null Spear comes out. The slow as well. Red buff being applied from oh, real He gets the passive. A heal from Zatai to help BDD try to run, but oh, the Pursuit is on. Zatai gonna pick up wins on the back with the help of the Spear in the Cougar form. Now Zatai comes back in, but ABC from the side blowing him up. Oh, real gets a double kill, and now a double buff. And here comes Kid and Lover Cryboy, but it looks like they're not in time, so they turn it into a three for one in favor of TPS. A really good fight. Oh my god, yeah, oh really good fight there is right. And Lucien coming in there, three kills right off the bat. Every single kill going straight to the AD carry. No Trinity Forces this time, it's a straight up BF sword. The buy for O'Real, and you gotta... The dive a little bit forced. PDD, like you said, ulted very early, didn't have the full duration of that Dominus before he went in, and his presence lacking in the top lane means that Zonda just gets to do whatever he wants. That includes getting a lot of CS lead, it includes taking down the first turret of the game, and just across the map, Type A Sniper is coming out to what you'd expect to be a gold lead, but actually just bringing it to even versus IG. Yeah, that Dragon and the early uh, pressure as well as kills helped uh, keep IG still in this gold lead, so they're abusing that one. And the turret that now picked up uh, the first turn of the game actually picked up, like you said before, by Zonda. So they're keeping up in the gold. They're still down by a, a measly 100. That comeback at it is at any point. But Kid still farming up, going for the Trinity Force first. But being three kills behind, that BF sword is going to be huge in the lane for a real. Yeah, when you go for Trinity Force versus a Bloodthirster, it's kind of an interchangeable item by pattern for a lot of AD carries. I, the Bloodthirster, incredibly good for lane dominance, but the power spike much, much higher when you hit that Trinity Force, uh, especially just since it gives you so much utility. Kid going to be looking for a Sheen to come up next, but Kid's actually been forced back to base several times, and like you mentioned, the CS deficit early on, level deficit as well, it really hasn't been a big source of strength in that bottom lane for IG. Oh, but up top, we actually have Illusion roaming up once again. Zonda going to get stunned out by PD there, a little bit of harassment to call the meek. They have a pink ward in that brush, they know there is no ward there. And are they going to look to camp this one out? Are they going to actually prioritize killing Zonda? He's got a Giant's Bolt and a Chain Vest. He's almost got a Sunfire Cape. So he is still going for that very standard build that he is normally, known, I guess, known for. This is what we've seen him do so far the past two days in a row. It's Sunfire, Spear Visage, and then he builds some damage. So he establishes that he is a sustaining monster. Mm -hmm. In the mid lane, though, Archangel Staff is almost complete for uh, next ABC. We do see Athene's done for Zatai, so the very staple uh, item in there is complete. So next, we're going to probably see him build for a lot more AP and try to spike up the damage on those spears. Yeah, the three assists actually coming towards Cassidy were really, really huge uh, because he went very, very early game. He built a, uh, he started with Crystal and Flask as a Doran's Ring as well. Won't see the Rod of Ages. Oh, PDD actually popped the ultimate up top, going in onto Zonda right now. He's going to mm. do a ton of damage, chunk him out. The dot damage from the passive, though, going to just force him back out, and he will back <laughs> on off and <laughs> just, just still sustain yeah. back up with the roar. Yeah, Zonda's just like, oh, you're trying to fight me. That's, that's cool. I'm just going to continue to heal up, stand underneath that turret, trade the damage right back back away and continues to see us uh, without really caring too much about that. That's Dominus down, but with Zonda still having his ultimate, he's pretty much immune to getting ganked. He has tons of sustain from the two health potions he has running, as well as the empowered Battle Roar. He's, he's completely happy up there. He took his turret. All he has to do is defend, and that puts the uh, the pressure on the rest of IG to make something happen. Because PDD really can't get a whole lot done versus Zonda, despite having that early two kill advantage. Yeah, and also what we forgot to talk about was that the tier one in the bot lane fell with a nice uh, aggressive push from Wins, and we're seeing a blue buff go on over to Zatai. They have the timing of the dragon right now. They're gonna drop a pink ward, try to take control of that one, clear out the ward in there. It's gonna spawn right now, actually, in that next second. So they're gonna initially go on it first, and I wonder. Can wins get it with a, a, a consume smite steal? It looks like Dropping he's heading for it, quickly. but they're not going to be able to go for it. They're going to give it up. The four members of IG will be too dominant, and the second dragon of the game going to go over to IG once again. And so it's just going to be a free blue buff for next ABC, but really not not a lot of contesting of that dragon number one and two now going to IG, like you said. So for IG, they're getting a lot of global gold, but. Their global gold respawns. Yeah. The two turrets taken by Taipei Snipers now are uh, they're not going to come back. And that's top turret, bottom turret, both outer turrets down. Looking to put some pressure on the mid lane as uh, you can really see O'Real has that Bloodthirster completed with only two out of three items. Wow. 
But that Trinity Force on Kid, O'Real is just going to be such a monster. Three kills picked up in that early exchange. Just going to be know, really game-changing if TPS want to group up and push down this middle turret. What's weird is Mistake is kind of in the mid lane helping ABC out. He, he was waiting around the side. I was wondering if he's going to go for like a Rift Walk into Giant Growth combination with that one. But uh, we haven't really seen Winds make any plays in other lanes besides that mid lane to help with the dive and then bot lane to push a turret. There's a ping actually coming out right now as they might attempt to go on to PDD here. Ice Blast and F Zero can kite him pretty well, but they spot him out and he walks into the tri bush. They back on out. There's no wards from the side of PDD up top there, so they will just give up that pressure and let Zana do his thing, which is just farm and be a tanky menace. PDD, though, built a brutalizer and now not going for straight damage, oh, but going Dominus. in with Dominus as Zana is going to sustain back up and just run right on out. As PDD without slice and dice and the stun can't really do anything else. <laughs> Zana just walks away. He's like, oh, that's, that's an interesting ability you have there. I'm going to watch you as I walk back towards the minions. And just farm and heal back up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mid lane, we did see a spear land from Zatai on to next ABC, forced him back to base. That is going to be the Archangel staff completed. Grabs boots and a ton of consumables, actually. Rift walking his way back towards mid. And I, I like the sort of passive start to this game for uh, Taipei Snipers. They were totally content to just sit in lane and just farm it out for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. It was actually the initiation by IG that sort of forced TPS into playmaking mode. And hey, man, they were able to rise to the occasion. Three kills picked up there. And that just means that O'Real has a lot of pressure with that Bloodthirster, but he immediately goes for the home-guarded Berserker Greaves next. It's a very early third tier buy. All right, so going to prioritize a lot of the mobility you can get and uh, just, just a lot less time spent in the base, so you just get right on out. In the mid lane, though, we see a little bit of a group coming in from IG. They're going to uh, just hold up the push coming in from Zonda, who is roaming around. Mistake, though, doing a really cool thing, which is roam towards the mid lane and eat up those traps so nobody else takes them. And uh, then he's just going to head right on back down bot. These are pre nerf traps, though, so they last a long time. And uh, he's going to maybe look to eat that one as they head to the lane. Looks like no, but they're going to go down bot and uh, clear out the wave. A true shot barrage does land across those minions, help a little bit of kid farm, but shove out the lane, which uh, Aurel is looking to actually meet up. All right, so we probably shouldn't see too much action. We're going to see a little bit of a gank top lane from Wins, but Renekton Rengar, they're both so tanky. This shouldn't actually be too devastating. The Bola connects as well as the Empowered Bola. Ice Blast going down. Ignite as well. PDD gets the Dominus off cooldown. Absolute Zero being channeled out. Zonda going to get stunned down. PDD trying to slice and dice his way, but it's not enough. Assault and Battery through the stealth. It's going to be Illusion getting the kills. The tie roaming up as well as ABC. Can they chase this one down? Rift walk up in a couple seconds. He's out of there. Vault Breaker is charging, but it's not enough. And that's going to be a one for none. And Zonda going down after a really nice uh, timed out Assault and battery from Illusion. Yeah, and Zatai showing up there. I thought it was just going to be the 2v2, but Zatai is just like, I don't really like those odds. We're going to go throw an extra player up top. That's going to be the first turn of the game for IG taking it down. Can Taipei Snipers make a play elsewhere on the map? Oh. We, had, we saw O'Real just solidly split pushing down the bottom lane. Kids ah. holding mid. Playing it safe. Playing it safe and smart, holding back, not extending any further into ABC because a worth walk into a slow, into a sphere would be very dangerous. We've already seen the counter warden coming in from Cryboy as well as losing been dropping ping wards back and forth. But Mistake, with an Oracle's noticing this, will be able to counter out those wards coming in from IG. So TPS responding really well. We're going to see Kid and Zatai just pushing out mid lane and maybe a five-man group made as PDD going to not go towards top anymore and look to join his team. And Dragon's in a minute and a half. No surprises here. We talked about the Southeast Asian meta where you just sit your side laner off to the side, let Zonda get uh, Spear Visage, Sunfire Cape, and then Trinity Forest. And once you get that, uh, those three core items on Rengar, you just you pretty much just do whatever you want. <laughs> now it's PDD returning to that top lane. He's actually itemized a little bit of early offensive itemization in the Brutalizer to see if that's what the Doctor ordered to take on Zonda, who's He's just ridiculous right now. His Rengar is something you really can't shut down early on. You can see 0-2, but still able to CS, able to push yep. the wave out. That's all he's designed to do. It's also really interesting, his build. If you look at he's got five in the Empowered War, four into the Bola, and then one into the Q. So not prioritizing damage, just sustaining uh, kite potential with mm -hmm. the Bola as well as the Root. And we're seeing a blue buff get tossed on over to Zatai, as well as Mistake. Going to get hit by a Crescendo right now. Kid going to go in Power Group, a giant growth. And he's going to flash away from the last Mystic Shot. Absolute zero on the calling coming out but no kill to follow, and that is going to be the end of that one, and Dragon in 40 seconds still. <laughs> yeah, the Culling doing absolute zero there, as it did not land, and that is going to be disengaged once again. Now Dragon up in oh. 40 seconds. Zonda going to heal up a little bit, but there is Dominus down from PDD. Mm. Take Zonda very low. 
I Fine. think he's gonna just shrug it off, throw the bullet, turn around, and <laughs> just get right on out of there. And he's gonna pop the ultimate and turn around here. PDD gonna be the target. Whiff walk in, slow comes out as well as the Nose Field. Jump in with the bola from Zonda. He can't slice and dice his way through that one, and it's gonna be next ABC getting oh, the kill, but here comes the tie in illusion. Forcing the flash in his own assault and battery coming in as well as the spear, but the flash from ABC oh, kids there. gets him out. Kid coming in, the spear gonna be blocked out by O'Real to keep him safe. Tower shots as well as Ignite drops oh, out. Ty, can he get it? The heal doesn't get it in time. Mistake gets it with the Ignite, and that is gonna be a two for none in favor of TPS as they just completely kite that one out and just barely saved their lives. <laughs> oh, real actually used Relentless Pursuit to body block the, the spear, spear. Yeah. that would have gotten a kill. And with Zatai making a little bit of a mistake there, going down, like you said, a two for zero in favor of TPS. And TPS, I feel like this is something that TPA used to do. They would be totally content to just play their passive game and force their opponents to make plays. And every single time IG has done this, with a few notable ex exceptions up in that top lane, Taipei Snipers have been able to fire back, and now not only do they pick up that two for zero, they're gonna take their first dragon of the game and shift a little bit of that global gold back into their favor. Yep, and they're still down by 1.2k IG. Their map and gold pressure has been phenomenal. <laughs> VDD and Zana just kind of ignoring each other in the mid lane. They know they can't kill each other right now. Just so tanky coming in, and uh, he's got the attack speed as well as some of the crit and a lot of armor. But now, a four-man group in this <laughs> blue brush. Is Illusion going to walk into the bait or going to get caught Fnatic? out? Is that you? <laughs> yeah, Fnatic, right? Yeah, waiting in the brush? I'm not sure, but they are waiting for a uh, very nice catch here. I don't think they're going to find anyone. Illusion in the area has All right, an oracle. Blood Boil on Lucian right now. He's going to spot them out. They're going to back on out. And uh, TPS playing it smart, playing it safe. They will just disengage and not try to extend it to anything too crazy. As five members of IG were in that mid lane. All right, and that's actually the Bushwhack on an next ABC. They see him recalling. So IG, they're going to make a strong push down here in the mid lane. PDD might go for the dive on his Zonda. Does draw that turret aggro, but just tanking it up. He does not care. Yeah. And out of position, a great rotation from IG. Able to take down second mid tier turret and the turret advantage now finally in their favor at 22 minutes. Minutes. Yep, as well as a nice little gold advantage. We're going to see them rotate towards that blue buff. They're waiting in the brush right now. They're trying to do the same thing that TPS just tried to do to <laughs> them. So we will see if they aggress forward. There's no wards in that front brush that they can see with the oracles. They're going to group up as four right now. PDD going to join them. He looked like he was going back, but he's going to stay with the team and try to just capitalize on this. One kill or two kills could oh, mean a Baron. TPA mistake going to go in right now. Illusion's going to just zone him back off. Assault and Battery is up. Ice Blast comes in. Spear does not connect. The Kali to cut a little bit of damage. PDD Going into the back line, but there's Zonda. He's gonna just tank up four members as well as Giant Growth. Absolute zero getting channel. Chris Channel to interrupt that one. Illusion gets Zonda, but they're getting really low as ABC gets it with the Null Sphere. He's gonna get kited back and forced to rip walk away. True Shot Brush connects across this one. Kid going out to O'Real as well as he forced the flash and barrier away. Zatai picks up mistake on the side. Oh, Can gonna they kill get everyone. wins or O'Real? Zatai is gonna pounce in. Spear comes out and connects. Double kill for Zatai chasing down wins at this point. Blood Boy not going to be enough. Does he have flash? It looks like no. He's going to stop in the brush and try to juke this one out. Going to go back and forth. Just do some cheeky movements. But this Hatai with a triple kill through that whole fight. They just went four for uh, none. Uh, four for one, excuse me, in favor of IG. Yeah, only PDD dying there. I feel like O'Real's decision to auto attack minions during that team fight probably wasn't the best damage maximization option there for him. And uh, also probably the barrier very late. And by that time, uh, you saw it. Next ABC actually got chunked to half health by PDD. Yes, he did die, but he made, he took it. Next ABC out of the fight. He was not able to get in there. He, Next ABC wanted to do exactly what Zatai did, but because Zonda wasn't able to do to Zatai what PDD did yeah. to Next ABC, oh, yeah. the mid lane pressure there is Zatai just completely cleaning that fight up. He actually positioned himself by the ward in the blue side, so he just completely took complete control of that fight, throwing the spears on the side, staying perfectly safe. And now, with that, there's a lot of pressure for IG, uh, for TPS to deal with because they now lost a tier two down bot. They had the four kills go over to IG and. Uh, Four and two, Death Cap completed another uh, blasting one picked up. So now looking for possibly the Void Staff for Zatai, and those spears are gonna hurt. Because Nidalee is so safe, she can afford to itemize a lot of CDR, a lot of damage, stuff that Cassidy would, would love to have, but can't because he's just a melee mage. You need a lot of defensive options there. You can see the uh, Zanya's Hourglass coming out. You can also, uh, I mean, you're going to have Seraph's Embrace here in about 50 more stacks, so it will be coming out very, very soon. But just a little bit of a different style. You can see IG playing to that style, uh, just witnessing 
Zatai able to clean up that last fight. Also, Lover Cryboy, you know, we, we haven't talked about him too much over the game. Zero and zero for that bottom lane performance, but you, you gotta look at the, the, uh, the success of those assists. The three in that column transferred directly into, uh, I think that was those three kills onto yep. Zatai, and a great start out there with a crescendo in that fight to really turn it around in favor of IG. Stopping that absolute zero was key, as well as hitting Zonda with that one. We do see now a potential group on this bot lane inhibitor turret. There's four members down there, and uh, they might look to siege that one up. They have the ability to use those spears with the blue buff on him. And uh, Zatai gonna be a key factor here. Spear chunks away at about a fourth of Wind's health. We do see a lot of damage coming in from O'Reel though. Blood there's certain static shiv completed, so tons of damage coming in from those auto attacks. Oracle's now taking complete control of this red side of the jungle, and IG have now establish a complete dominance of this red side. Now Zonda's been forced to back. He's not going to have a Trinity Force or be able to complete that Spectre Scowl into a Spirit Passage just yet. The pressure coming out from IG, keeping him from being that big split push lane bully. We've talked about him being every single game previously. And 0-3, it's a little bit uncharacteristic. It's not the yeah. biggest deal oh, to yeah. Zonda because he made mainly just fights minions with that as he keeps the split push on. But IG are not letting him be that split push monster. Now it's actually PDD returning to the top lane. Oh, push that one in. Oh, oh real just got <laughs> taken down to below half HP off of just one spear. So Zatai can completely control out some of these team fights with some perfect spears. Seraph's Embrace completed there for next ABC, who also has home guard boots. So double home guard boots there for Taipei Snipers. And you look over at IG, and they still have, uh, what is that, three unupgraded tier one boots there. And it's interesting to watch the way that Southeast Asians play. They really don't prioritize boots at all during the early phase. And once the outer turrets go down, they're just like, oh my goodness, we need all the boots we can possibly buy. And I talked about O'Real picking up very early home guard boots. But not really able to use them very effectively, and team fight positioning in the last uh, fight definitely going the way of IG uh, using uh, even without you know the boots for repositioning. Now, yep. okay. dragon gonna go down here to IG. Nobody there to contest. I've seen one dragon go the way of Taipei snipers, but at least for right now, IG reestablishing control of that global objective and setting themselves up at about a 7,000 gold lead as well. Heading back to base to buy up for what could be the next big Baron push of the game. Yeah, they have pink wards, but still those two wards out there from Mistake have been controlling that side. That will give me a little bit of vision and some safety to TPS to show that they are not doing Baron, not trying to sneak this one out and bait it. But now Mistake has some time to leave the base. He's going to head out there, go clear out the pink ward, use that Oracles. He should be able to spot it out. There we go. They pinged onto it, but he's not going to waste the time. <laughs> he does not want to get caught out. That'd be a huge mistake for him. And for the side of TPS, we do see everybody roaming around. It's high hanging out there, PDD as well. And they are starting now make their way over there. They might try to just clear this out and bait in a brush for the side of IG. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Taipei Snipers, they're going to be forced to clear out their mid lane, push things out, clear wards around from Baron. So they're always going to be a little bit visible on the map for yep. IG. It could set up nice picks or at least spear opportunities from mm. the Tai that could start kind of a chain reaction. You chunk somebody low, they have to go back, it's 4v5, and then you pressure an objective off of that. Yeah, and a beautiful true shot barrage just came out from Kid to push out the bot lane, which was building up really big for uh, the side of TPS. It's going to stop them, but now over the wall, there's a ward in the pit that wasn't spotted out by that Draven ward right there. So they're going to go in, but the side of TPS does know they can see it, and they're going to be forced to disengage as they see other people come in. ABC chunking out Kid. Here comes Zada with the, the calling. calling in the back. A ton of damage. Kid is is going to be forced to flash and shift Huge out. Huge crescendo. to stop three members from the side of TPS right there. They're going to back out and disengage. No one dies. Kid barely gets out. He's going to sustain off some golems, get a heal from Nidalee. Mistake trying to take out the ward as well as keeping Baron aggro. Does get one shot on him and one shot of PDD, so splitting that one up. But TPS hold out the Baron in a really, really key ward right there. Yeah, MVP Baron ward right there. The pink ward just a little bit too far out of the Baron pit to spot that one out, and that just allowed Taipei Snipers a great opportunity. Kidman dropped down to like 10% hit points before the fight even started. Yeah. So IG are just like, all right, we know how this fight goes. Not going to commit to that one. And once again, Lover uh, Cryboy there with a great disengage. Sona Crescendo just really stopping that fight. And so for now, IG forced to back off. But now they're going to come back. Uh, you see Trinity Force, Last Whisper, almost that Blade of the Ruined King completed for Kid. But it's the Death Cap Void Staff, Athenes and Holy Grail on Zatai.
All right, we see Illusion getting initiated on right now. As, oh, Real will pick up the kill. They're going to try to turn off the blue buff. Real, a kid is going in the back right now, as well as PDD trying to zone off wins. And Zonda going to jump in on the back. Kid goes down as Zonda going huge, but does take down Oh Real with them. Spears chasing this one out. PDD going to look to try to catch out Zonda right now. Really tanky. The bushwhack does connect. He lands a bola to slow them down just a little bit. But that is going to be a two for one in favor of TPS. And there you go, Taipei Snipers. They lose a reel, but they take down Kid, who, like we said in the last fight, dropped down very low early on. This time, fully dead. His illusion down as well. No jungle pressure out there means that Wins could look to do some cheeky fair and stuff, at least for positioning. And uh, for, for Mistake, this is his, his favorite time of the game because he doesn't have to worry about getting sniped out by Spears. He can go clear out the entire jungle. Yep, and Zana now with a double buff, looking strong. He's going to be able to uh, either fi finish off those Merc Treads and go for a little bit more damage, which is what he looks for normally at uh, the end of uh, the fight. And it looks like we are going to uh, have to pause the game just a little bit. All right, it doesn't look like we're going to start things right back up. A uh, little bit of downtime there, but getting things back underway. Now, next ABC, farming things up 86 gold off of that wolf camp. So yeah, a lot of need <laughs> a lot of gold coming his way. The Zonya's Hourglass uh, for next ABC is going to be absolutely game changing. It allows him to initiate fights, dish out a lot of burst damage, and then have that two and a half seconds that Zonya's give you to not only look completely fabulous, but also get your cooldowns back, be able to rift walk out back to safety and get another spell rotation away. Wow, actually, Zonya jumping in on the PDD who is trying to maybe force an engage here or zone off for this Baron that is being three manned right now, currently by three members of IG. We're seeing Zonya leap in. They're going to clear out the ward in the brush, and now they're going to try to bait this and maybe force a disengage. The Baron is very low at this point. They're looking to commit. To a PDD is zoning with the ultimate. Lover C boy gonna get chunked out, oh, but so ABC. ABC with the spear. Here comes Zana, a two man crescendo as well. On top of that one, Zana taking up everything again. The calling is coming out on the back. Zana is giant girl. These forced to flash out and leap away, but mistake will go down for the side oh. as well as a huge spear from Zatai taking down next ABC. As now with Baron on their side, they're gonna force a flash and chase down wins. Zatai is not gonna look to let him get away. Spear comes out, he dodges it away with the blood boil, drops the bush rack, lets him get away, but that's two for not on Baron now. On IG side, this looks like it's going to be an inhibitor push. Yeah, mistake. And next ABC down. It's only going to be O'Real, who without the culling won't have a lot of great wave clear opportunities against this middle turret, which will certainly fall. Inhibitor to fall next. And uh, I got to say, next ABC without the Zonya's Hourglass complete in time for that fight. Got chunked out, taken down very early on. And O'Real, uh, the culling, it's great for sieging turrets. It's great for clearing out minion ways. It's not great for DPS. It's not great for positioning. Both things that Kid just had in spades there. Huge true shot barrage and 2 1 and 3. He's been 0 0 for most of this game. Yeah. But finally coming out, having a great team fight against O'Real, who had an incredibly big early power spike with a triple kill. Now really kind of not coming into his own. Triple items completed for him, so it's a nice place to be. You're just going to have to do something with it that probably does not include standing around culling the open air. Yeah, um, the side of Kid, though, he's building towards that Blade of the Rune King. He's got the uh, Bilgewater Cutlass currently uh, sitting on quite a bit of gold. So when he does go back, he's looking to finish that one off. He has 1,800 in the bag. Next ABC, going to farm a bot lane. And uh, he's kind of he's lacking the damage we're normally used to seeing from a 30 to 40 minute build on Kassin with the Death Cap and Void Staff. He went for the uh, survivability. The shield is great from Saris as well as the Zonia's. But like you said, the Zonia's not completed in time that, uh, for that last fight. So kind of hurt him there, as well as the Spears from Zatai just being on point. All right, now Baron buff is on. IG, they will choose to take down Dragon, which is, uh, it's not questionable. It's a great uh, chance to just take a free global objective. Pushing is going to be the name of the game now with Baron buff with that inhibitor down. Keep in mind, this is still patch 3.13, uh, so having an inhibitor down affects all lanes, which is something that changed very effectively in uh, the in the next patch, the preseason. So for right now, all lanes going to be pushing in, and that means that Zonda's job as a split pusher is going to be even more important. As uh, without teleport, he's forced to rejoin the team, but does have uh, on the hunt to, or not all on the hunt, uh, thrill of the hunt to get back to the rest of his team with a little bit of move speed, a chance for initiating, but. I don't think Taipei Snipers are really going to be the ones initiating this next engagement. Yeah, unless they find some perfect engagement with the Baron. And now we're going to see Bushwhack oh, do a ton of damage. Spear oh kills him! God. Okay, Zatai unstoppable. Holy crap. <laughs> All right, Deathcap, nearly see large red voice staff. Poor support, I know his feelings. <laughs> As the Spear one-shot him with the help of the Bushwhack. And the mistake for Lulu is really stepping on that Bushwhack, reduced his magic resistance down to, I believe, like 25. Oh. So there's actually bonus damage being 
being dealt by Zetai, who if I check this out, I believe has, yeah, 20 flat magic penetration 40%. After, after 40%. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, plus the magic resistance reduction from those bushwhacks. There's, yeah, no resistances there at all. Calling to come out, the minions getting culled. PDD is just standing there, taking the turret. <laughs> he just does not care. Mistake now spawning. There's gonna be initiation in coming in and as well as Wade's getting hit by the crescendo. The episode zero got canceled. Illusion picks up one giant growth on ABC. He's gonna zone us, but he is gonna die as soon as he comes out. Zonda's trying to do something. Double kill for Illusion. That is gonna be looks like the inhibitor while PDD's diving. The spear connects from Zetai to take down Oh real And this is gonna be oh game one. As Mistake eats a spear in the base. I wonder if Zetai is gonna try to snipe him off. It looks like no. Flash comes out. Barry comes out. And that is going to be game one over to IG over TPS. An incredible performance by Zetai. It finishes the game at 7, 2, and 5. But you really have to look at the way that IG played that early game. They, they tried to make plays, and you got to give some props to TPS, who, for the most part, were able to counter those initiations out. Early game, triple kill onto O'Real, continuing to be able to kind of beat IG at their own game. But IG just... It's the late game power of the poke from Nidalee and just better engagement. Love or cry, boy, man. Y you gotta look at that guy because 3 1 or uh, 0 0 10, it's not the biggest score for a support, but every single one of his crescendos they hit, they set so things good. up, force disengagements. IG just looking incredibly dominant. Finish the game, double the kill, 16 to 8. And a 15,000 gold advantage to end things out there. But that's only game number one. It's a wow. best of three, Dan. Cannot wait to get these games underway. I I mean, IG looking very dominant, but at the same time, TPS, you just saw how effectively they were able to counter out some of the plays from IG to see if they can do a little bit of a better job here. Coming up in game number two. Yeah, and uh, if we see Lover C Boy play Sona again, I think that's something that they might have to watch out from the side of TPS. Even though the lane phase is a little rough, the three kills on Oreo, like we said before, were huge, but man, just some perfect play coming in from that Sona. And then Zatai's Nidalee. <laughs> this is pre nerf Nidalee. This is what she can do. This is what she's capable of, a one-shot, a mistake. That was, ah, man, that Nidalee play was so good. <laughs> yeah, just watching every single spear, you got to hold your breath because you know it's coming. And uh, in game number two, I mean, you got to expect the Nidalee ban, but that's going to take away even more of the ban phase. You notice two bans actually targeted towards Love Cry Boys. So yeah. uh, there's the Annie band out as well as the Fiddlesticks. Yep. So if they're not going to ban out both of those supports, that means instead of just playing the Sona, whose crescendo is always on point, you're going to give away an Annie, a Fiddlesticks that, uh, I mean, we saw O'Real with a lane advantage. Yes. You give those supports away. Where's that advantage going to go? I don't know, but it looks like we're going to go to a quick commercial break. And uh, we're going to go to a quick commercial break here at Intel Extreme Master Singapore. And we'll be back with game number two of Taipei Snipers taking on Invictus Gaming. We're currently 1-0, and we'll be right back.
professional grade communication tool. The choice of professional teams. Perfect stream viewing experience. Chosen by online streamers. Easy to use voice messenger service. Chosen by over 12 million gamers. Communication is always vital when competing in tournaments. Winning a match requires perfect coordination.